magnify you, Father. We thank you for this day. We thank you for every day, Lord. You are worthy, Lord. We give you praise. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Yes, you are worthy of our prayers. Worthy, Lord. Thank you, Father. Worthy, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to you, Thank you, Jesus. Praise your mighty name. Praise your Father. We had a great movie last night. We watched a dinner, we dinner and a movie. It was called War Room. Amen. How many was here for that? Amen. How many have seen that before? Oh, yeah. It's a great movie. It is. And it was so good. Even though I'd seen it before, it was just... It just touched my heart. Over again. I sat there bawling the whole, the whole movie. I had to get some clean action because I was weeping like a baby. So, But that's okay. Amen. Because we need to have soft hearts. We need to understand the truth of God's word. And we need to understand God truly is a God who, who desires our prayers to him. Amen. We need to have communion with God. Yes. Because he loves us. He, Jesus loved us so much Thank that he you. laid down his own life for us. And he said, greater love hath no man than this that a man lay down his life yes. for his friends. And he said, you are my Thank friends Lord. if you'll keep my commandments. So, Glory. But he gives us the ability by entering into us and making us a new creation in him. He gives us the ability to live like he'd have us to live, to act like he's have us to act and to do what he's have us to do. Amen. He empowers us to do exploits. Say exploits. Yes, exploits. That's mighty things that you can't do on your own. That's right. God will give you the strength to do it. Yes. How can you do that? You can do it because he's God. Amen. That's how he can do it. It's called grace. Yes. He graces us with everything we need. Mm -hmm. That's the gifting and anointings of God to do what he called us to do. The Bible says that, that uh, Samson was a mighty man of valor. He was mighty, but not because he was strong physically, because God graced him with supernatural strength yes. to be able to overcome Amen. the enemy. That is great. So when you stand for God, God will enable you to do mighty things. Yeah. King David, he was, he was just a child. He was just a, a teenage boy when he defeated the giant Goliath. Yes. A man that was about as tall, almost as tall as this silly. This guy was a huge man. <clears throat> he was a huge man. And all the all of the Israel was afraid of him. But David came up and he had, by the anointing of God, he had killed a lion. He had killed a bear protecting the sheep. Yes. So he said, I'll kill this Philistine. And they said, oh, you're just a kid. He said, I killed the lion and I killed the bear. I can kill this Philistine. Yep. And he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should come against the people of God? <laughs> so when somebody comes against you, you need to understand who you are. Right. Through Christ. Yeah. Amen. Jesus is more than enough. Yes. He will enable us to do everything we need to do. Amen. Anything you need to do for work, God will enable you to do it. Amen. You just need to trust God. Believe yes. God. Yes. We need to believe God and trust God. Amen. He will empower us. Even though in the natural we can't do it, God will empower us to do it by His power, by His mind. Yes. yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise your Father. Glory. Thank you. Amen. Glory to God. I'm going to pray over our message. Thank Father you, God, we just thank you for your word. Yes. I just ask you, Lord, to enlighten us today. Father, open our eyes so we can see our ears, so we can hear our hearts, so we can understand. Make your word alive to us today, Father. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Now in James, turn me to James. Chapter 4, verse 14. Thank you, Father. James chapter 4, verse 14. Thank you, Lord. That James was an apostle of God. He was the brother of Jesus. But uh, he was teaching under the anointing of God. So this is God's word. This is God's word. Verse 13 says, Go to now, you that say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and we will continue there a year and buy and sell and get gain. Whereas you know not what tomorrow brings. For what is your life? What is your life? 
It is even a vapor. That's like a puff of smoke. You know how you have a little puff of smoke? You watch it, it dissipates real fast. Our life in the big picture is like that. We're here for a little while, folks, and then we're gone. But whatever we choose to do in this life will determine our eternity. Yes. If we choose to serve God, then we'll have eternity with God. Yes. If we choose to walk after the flesh, we will die. And we will spend eternity with Satan. He will be our God. If we choose not to follow God, the God that died, Jesus Christ, the God that died for us, the God that came and gave us the opportunity to walk in life, if we choose not to follow him, we're following the devil. Even if we don't think we're following the devil, we are. Yes. He is the God of this world. God wants us to live in eternity with him. Now, when God first created man, man lived a long, long time. A long time. Man lived a long, long time. Mm -hmm. A long time. Say a long time. A long, long time. time. The average lifespan of men after, after God created Adam and Eve, it was over 900 years. We're going to read some scriptures about that. Men lived over 900 years. That's a long time. Were those regular years? Yes, those are regular years, just like yours are today. They lived a long, long time. And animals lived a long time, too. Before the flood, everything was different. Everything was different before the flood. And 1,656 years until the flood, men lived a long, long time. Even Noah lived to be over 600, lived to be 650, 950 years old. Noah was 600 years old when the flood happened. 600 years old. He lived 350 years after the flood. He died when he was 950 years old. And the, and that was just a little bit shorter than Methuselah. He lived to be 960 some years old. Methuselah was the oldest man recorded that it ever lived. You've heard of that, right? Let's look at some of those scriptures real quick. Turn me to Genesis chapter 5, verse 5. Genesis chapter 5, verse 5. And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years and he died. Adam lived to be 930 years old. And then let's go to verse, uh, chapter 5, verse 8. And all the days of Seth, that was the, the righteous son that they had after Abel. And all the days of Seth were 912 years and he died. These were all people that, that lived a long, long time. And the days of, verse 14 says, and the days of Canaan were 910 years and he died. Verse 20 says, and all the days of Jared were 960 and two years and he died. Verse 27 says, and all the days of Methuselah were 969 years and he died. Chapter 9, verses 28 and 29 says, and Noah lived after the flood 350 years and all of the days of Noah were 950 years, and he died. And then every couple generations after that, lifespans dropped. Until it got to Abraham. When it got to Abraham, Genesis chapter 5, verses 7 and 8. It says, And these are the days and the years of Abraham's life, which he lived a hundred and three score, a score is twenty. So that would be 160 plus 15 years. That's 175 years. And then Abraham gave up the ghost and died in a good old age. An old man and full of years and was gathered together his people. About 400 years later, because the children of Israel got put into bondage after, after, jo after uh, Joseph, uh, they forgot about Joseph in, in Egypt and Abraham had Isaac, Isaac had Jacob, and Jacob had Joseph. And Joseph delivered the children of Israel out, out of the bondage. And they, came, they, and they came into Egypt. And Joseph, and then after some time, the children of Israel grew so big that the Egyptians decided to put them in bondage. And they were in bondage for 400 years. So after Abraham, it was like, it was like 430 years and they, before Moses came along. 
And Moses, when he became 80 years old, God called him to deliver the children of Israel out of Egypt. But I want to read to you first in, in uh, Psalms. Turn me to Psalms chapter 90. It's a psalm that Moses wrote. <coughs> psalm chapter 90, verse 1. 90? Psalm chapter 90, verse 1. A prayer of Moses, the man of God. And then go down to verse 10. This is what Moses said. The days of our years are three score and ten. That's 70 years. And if by strength, there are four score years. That's 80 years. So from the time of Moses until now, lifespans on the average have been 70 to 80 years. But we can live longer than that. But that's the average lifespan, even today, 70 to 80 years. But we can live longer than that. My mom's not 84 years, I mean, 85 years old. My grandpa lived to be 91 years old. There's a lot of people who live to be over 100 years old, even in the Bible. God promises us if we will live for him a holy life, we can stand on these promises, but we've got to seize these things. We've got to operate as God would have us to operate and be led by the Spirit of God. But we can stand on these promises. God promises us long life. That's, that's over 80 years, folks. He said, with long life, and Tom quoted this scripture, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. God promises us long life, but we've got to, to follow God's directions and do things the way God leads, guides, and directs us to do. We want to live a long life. Okay? It's important for us to take good care of our bodies because God wants us to do that. God gave us certain kinds of foods. We need to eat natural foods that will help us to live a good, a long life. All this processed food stuff, we need as much as possible, we need to stay away from that stuff. So the foods you buy on the shelves at the grocery stores, we mostly need to stay away from that stuff. Get meat and vegetables and fruits, natural, without all the preservatives and all that junk in them. That's the best thing we can do for a steady ride. Okay, bring it to the dinner. Huh? Have you quit bringing it to the dance? <laughs> well, just be careful what you eat, all I'm saying. God cares about us. I've been studying about cholesterol lately, and, and I hear all kinds of things. The doctors say, don't, the cholesterol's bad for you. And then, then I read other people say, whatever, there's no bad cholesterol. So I started studying about it. This week I've been studying about it. And what I found out is they say LDL cholesterol is bad and HDL cholesterol is good. That's what they say. But what that comes from is what cholesterol does. Is your God made our bodies to make cholesterol. Our liver makes cholesterol. Why does it do that? Well, evidently it needs it. Our bodies need it. Why would God create our bodies to make cholesterol if our bodies don't need it? If you eat more cholesterol, your body makes less cholesterol. Why? Because your body needs a certain amount of cholesterol. What happens is our arteries, you know your arteries? Inside your arteries, they're real fragile. So when like you eat sugar, stuff like that, it inflames your arteries. So your body, your liver, your body, your liver tells your body, and your liver produces Cholesterol, LDL cholesterol, what it does, it shoots to those arteries and it tries to repair them. So LDL cholesterol actually repairs the insides of your arteries. That's what its job is. So when they find arteries that have, that have clogged up, they find LDL cholesterol there. Well, it's not because the, the LDL cholesterol caused the, the blockage. It's because it was there trying to fix the problems. It's like, have you ever heard of ozone? We've got ozone is a thing produced by nature. God made it that way. Because the air gets polluted, and the God made lightning, and lightning makes, makes a ozone. And God put ozone in the earth to clean the air. So ozone cleans the air. So like when cities that have bad air pollution, they talk about how high that ozone level is that day. 
Well, the ozone is not there. The ozone doesn't make the pollution. The ozone is fighting against the pollution. So if there's high ozone, that just means there's high pollution. Just like in your body, if you have high cholesterol, that's not because your cholesterol is causing you problems. It's because your body's got some problems that your cholesterol is working on. So if you have high cholesterol, that's good because it's repairing your body. Okay? Hallelujah. I'm just telling you the truth. God wants us to know these things because God created our bodies to function. You know, God gave us everything we need to, for our bodies to be repaired. If you will take care of your body right and eat right and supplement right, your body will have everything it needs for it to repair itself just like God created it to. So God created your body. So when the doctors say, don't eat egg yolks, egg, you, egg yolks is the most important part of the egg. They're like a giant vitamin. Yes. Come on. They have the most things in it for your body. Have you ever heard of cod liver oil? Yep. Yeah. You know why that's good for you? Yeah. It's almost pure cholesterol. Yeah. It helps heal your body. Why? Because cholesterol heals your body. So uh, why would I take a pill that would stop my cholesterol from working? God created my body to produce that so it could heal my body. So if I do that, then my body's going to have all kinds of problems that, that it would not normally have. It's going to have give me memory problems because the, the brain needs like a lot of cholesterol. So God puts cells in our brains that make cholesterol. So if I take a pill that stops my body from making cholesterol, I'm going to have problems in my mind. My memory won't work as good. My mind won't function like it should. I'll get grouchy. I'll get in bad moods. I'll get depressed. All those kind of things uh, come from, from these kind of things. Now, I know this is supposed to be a service where I'm preaching the Word, but I'm preaching the truth of the Word of God. God created our bodies to function right. So we need to give our bodies what it needs and not give our bodies stuff it don't need, okay? Just don't blindly follow what the doctor says because you find out years and years later that all these people die. And then they say, oh, we're sorry. And the lawyers get busy suing everybody. I mean, that's still coming all the time. So just because they've done the stupid stuff, just use your own brain. God, give us a brain to use our brains. Just follow God's direction. Just follow the truth of the word of God. God made everything good. When God made us, he made everything good. And God said he made man. He looked at man and he said, it is very good. So if we follow God's directions, then things will be, things will be very good. Okay? Hallelujah. So, so that's important. That's important. Uh, we, we really, I really miss Peggy because she was with us for years and and I loved her, and I cared about her, and it was really a shock to me. Last Sunday morning, she was in service, and, yeah. and she told us she had fallen five times that week. And uh, then after service, I, I had no idea that she, I mean, she didn't look too good that Sunday, but you know, I thought it was just because of her falls or something. But then I got a call late Sunday afternoon that she passed away sometime between 12.30 and 4.30. Wow. She just left here at 12. We would had service till about twelve o'clock. Everybody left about twelve o'clock. So I mean, that's sad. We're going to give a celebration of life, life service this afternoon. But I want you to understand that we, we never know when the end is. No. We never know when the end is. You never know when the end is. You never know when the end is. Turn with me to uh, Hebrews. Chapter 9, verses 27 and 28. Thank you, Lord. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 27 and 28. As it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. He actually bare the sins of all the world. Unto them that look for him, say look for him, look for him, shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation or deliverance. Jesus is coming back. He's coming for a people who are ready for him, that are looking for him. 
I heard Charles Capp say one time that he didn't think that people that were really looking for him would make it. Well, I don't know about that. If you're in Christ, you're going to make it. But he, we need to be expecting him all the time. Amen. Because Jesus can come any moment. We can drop over dead any time. Anybody can. A meteor could come through the roof of this church and kill us all. I mean, that could happen. It's not likely to happen, but it could happen. I mean, anything could happen. You could have a car wreck on your way home, and you could be dead. That kind of stuff happens all the time. We need to understand that we're not guaranteed tomorrow. So we need to make sure we're ready all the time. Always be ready. Jesus taught that in like Matthew 24. He said there was a man that had that had a he was one of the servants. He was a servant. And he had control over this area, this area of land. And he, he was, he said in his heart, my Lord delayeth his coming. He said, so that man began to beat his fellow servants and do evil things. He said, the, the, the Lord of that servant came in an hour which he thought not. He said, there'll be weeping and gnashing of teeth. We need to be ready all the time, all the time. Because Jesus could come anytime or we could die anytime. I had a brother-in-law, he boomed, dropped over dead when he was 26 years old. When he was 26 years old, that's pretty young. Yeah. He was about this tall. He was a real tall guy. He just dropped over dead. They could not find out what killed him. He just died. What did he die? We have no idea. We have no idea. He just dropped over dead. Well... You mean that could happen? That can happen. Amen. You can just die like that. Amen. You can just die. So I'm just saying, Peggy, we never expected that. That was fast. Mm -hmm. She just dropped over there. Thank God she was ready. Yes. Because when you're ready, the Apostle Paul said to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So when you're ready, you just instantly go to Jesus. Amen. To be where Jesus is. She's Amen. in heaven where Jesus is at the right hand of God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So don't be sad for Peggy. We're sad for us because we we're going to miss her. But don't be sad for Peggy because she is with Jesus right yes. now. She's giving him praise and glory in heaven right now. Hallelujah. Glory. Praise your Father. Yes. Praise your Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. It's the point of what's the man done after this, the judgment. I mean, when you die, that's it. That's why it's important. That's why it's important for us to follow God. Yes. And Amen. take care of our bodies the best we can. And God will give us the strength to live a long, long time. Right. We've got to set our hearts to do these things. Amen. And don't just say, well, if I follow what the doctors say, then that's good enough. No, that may not be good enough. Make sure you're following God's directions. Don't just do what the doctors say, because the doctors mess up. Yeah. They're imperfect. God's not imperfect. God made us good. He made our bodies where it will fix itself. If we'll just take care of it right. Amen. So, so I'm losing weight right now. I'm on a low-carb diet. I'm cutting out carbohydrates. So like last night, there wasn't hardly anything I could eat at the dinner. So <laughs> I started eating a little bit of chili, and I thought, no, I better not eat any of that. Because, I, 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 because it's got carbs in it. So. so I've lost 10 pounds in the last three weeks. So, but I'm going I'm to be down a couple months. I'm going to be down about 20 more pounds. So. And then I'll be at a, at a weight where I can wear the pants I used to, to put on when I lost all that other weight before. But anyhow, I think it's good for us to take care of ourselves because God, God wants us to live a long time. He wants to help us live a long time. We also need to help ourselves and follow God's directions. You know, it says in Proverbs, it says, if you're at, at the king's house, they've got all kinds of dainty. Said, and they set the king's dainties in front of you. He said, if you're a man or person given to appetite, put a knife to your throat. That's what it says. Well, that's probably a good idea. In other words, whatever it takes, you know, in the New Testament it says, Jesus said, if, if there's anything that entices you to sin or offends you, offends me, that entices you to sin, 
If your eye offend you, he said, pluck it out. If your hand offend you, cut it off. In other words, anything that offends you, would entice you to sin, cut it off from your life. Cut it off from your life. So we can do that also with, with like food and stuff. We need to just, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just trying to help you. You sure are. Praise your father. <laughs> I was trying to help you. But I'm trying to help myself too. Right. So we just need to, to eat what's been healthy for us. It's going to be beneficial for us. So we need to learn, you know, what God made, the kind of foods that God made. I mean, sugar is poison to our bodies, but honey is great for us. Honey is a healing, you got healing agents in it. So, so we just need to, instead of eating sugar, we need to eat, if you want something sweet, eat honey. Because honey's good for you. Okay? Glory to God. Anyhow, I, I'm sliding over there. <laughs> You're doing Anyhow, I'm trying to do the best I can. Keep preaching. God's good, isn't he? Yeah. All the time. Thank you, Father. God is mighty. God is good. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy of our praise. Hallelujah. He's worthy of our praise. Yes, he is. He's worthy of our praise. Yes. Thank you, Father. Glory. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Well, glory. Amen. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy. Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory. Glory and honor. Glory and honor and power. For Thou hast created Thank you, Father. Glory to God. He's mighty God. Yes. Yeah, I like to also say to eat from the farmer's market because anything that's on the shelf or in the produce department at the store has been, yes. the enzymes have been weeded out because you take one of those, set it next to a farmer's market, and the farmer's market will go down the rock Oh, that's exactly right. If you can get like organic fruit, and uh, and I mean, if you're in the grocery store, I think they charge more for organic fruit oh, if it's yeah. in there. Oh, yeah. But yeah. it's worth it to pay the extra because you're getting something that's going to benefit your body yeah. better. Farmers yeah, market. farmers market's good. Yeah, as long as they're selling food that's been grown locally and stuff, that's the best place. And if you get get uh, if you eat meat, it's better to get meat that's just been grass-fed meat that's not just been hormones pumped into it and all that because all that contaminates the food so, so all the natural things you can eat is the best for us i mean god god is smart he's pretty smart yes uh you're just talking about honey there yes you need to buy honey that is cross not processed right but raw, spun honey. Out raw honey raw honey from honey. the area you live in right not the raw honey on the store that might be brought in from Iowa sure. or Nebraska. Sure. Because uh, the bees, in the, if you buy the honey that you're living in, the bees are at the plants and the pollen around your area okay. getting there to make their honey out of. Okay. Cool. I think that's good. Good. That's I think good. that's good. What'd you say? It's in a book. It's in a book. That's right. <laughs> Kathy says she's read it. <laughs> well, this woman, I mean, she's, she's a really smart woman. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Lord. 
God is so good. I'm going to add, if you love me and Denzel, you're going to eat some food today because we got to take it home. <laughs> <laughs> You got drop food for lunch? Yeah, lasagna and uh, chicken, fried chicken. Oh, fried chicken, that's good. That's good for me. <laughs> Hallelujah. God is good. I gotta go get my picked up yet. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. I think I'm almost done. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Pastor, it's early yet. It is, it is. You need to have an altar call so we can all repent. Well, let's do that. <laughs> but to eat but to eat something that has sugar in it or any place or when you go to someone's Get a mic so everybody hear what you're saying. We need we need to take care of our bodies the best that we know how. Yeah. The Lord will direct us as well. But if we go to someone's house, don't start preaching all the things that you think you know about health and stuff like that. The Bible true. says whatever is put before you that you should eat. That's true. And so it is not a sin if you have some sugar or anything like that. That's true. So we just need to understand that. We do need to keep our flesh in control as far as uh, things that, you know, like he says, Jesus said, if you, if you have trouble and, you know, you're lusting after a person or something like that or lusting after things, pluck out your eye. You know, he's, talk, he's letting us know how important it is that we do not enter into the flesh in sin. And that's what's important sure. for us to keep in our hearts. But yes, as we get knowledge and understanding of the, of the way that things have changed in our in our culture and in, in uh, over the years, uh, our foods and things like that, man comes up with better things, you know, they think to help us uh, to buy their foods and so forth. And so, but we just need to stay as natural as possible what the Lord has provided for us. Amen. That is important. Right. But it's not a sin. It's not a sin. some sugar today for a few no, it's different not. things. Just, just wanted just, to make that clear. Just be careful what you eat. I mean, if you want to be, be healthy, just be careful. Because God made provision for us. So. Portion control. Huh? Portion control. Yeah, portion control. And, and I mean, sometimes, for me, I pretty much have to cut certain things out. Because if I start eating it, then I want more. Right. See what I'm saying? So, so I just stay away from it. Okay. That's just me. I'm just trying to lead you by example. So, Hallelujah. God's good. Amen. Anybody here need prayer? Okay. These two need. You want to come up here and need prayer? Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. This name. Speak to this knee, Father. Just yes. pray, bring wholeness, Father. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus. You're worthy, Lord. You're mighty God. You're more than enough. We give you Thank praise you, and glory. You're worthy, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're mighty God. Oh, we love you, Lord. We give you glory, Father. We magnify you, Father. We glorify you. You're worthy, Father. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. Healing virtue. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. with the rhythm of Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Oh, you're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. 
Wow. <laughs> and that's just what I need. Well, good. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Father, we thank you, Father. Bring yes, deliverance, Lord. Father, her in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus. Thank, thank you, Lord. You, Lord. Yes. We give you praise. You're worthy, Lord. You're mighty, thank God. Thank you, Lord. Control. You're worthy, Lord. Control. 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 In the yes, mighty Lord. name of thank Jesus, you, I thank you, Lord, thank that you, you have self-control. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. praise you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Thank, 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 thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Been having headaches, not headaches, uh -huh. for uh, 24 hours, and I can't sleep. Okay. And my equilibrium or something is wrong. Okay. Father God, just pray that you make this body whole. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise and glory, Father. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. You're worthy, Lord. We give you glory, Father. We give you praise, Lord. You're a mighty God. You're more than enough. And I thank you, Lord. I praise you, Lord. You're a worthy, Lord. You're a mighty God. I thank you, Lord. Stress be God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Stress be God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Yes. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Glory to you, Father. We praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else? Praise you, Jesus. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Yes. Okay. Anybody else? Yes. Okay. Anybody else? Praise you, Father. Praise you, Lord. Well, Father God, we just lift up all these needs right now.